Hi, my name is Danielle. I'm an independent Cassettes consultant in Tassie. And I just wanted to show you a couple of flowers that I've made using the crocodile to set some eyelets in the centre of them. So this is one of the flowers I've made. So it's just, just a simple punch flower with the eyelet in the middle. This one here is using vellum. And again with the eyelet in the middle. And this one here is a bit more of a scrunched flower. Um, with the eyelid in the middle. Now all of these are um, are done on white, either paper or vellum, and I've, what I've done, I've coloured them with the dis new distressed stains. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well as use the crocodile. So what we're going to do first, I'm just going to show you how to use, do the vellum flower first. So I've got some a couple of pieces of my vellum, and I'm just going to grab my dusty Concord uh, distress stain. Now with these, the best way to get them working is to just push down until they start to flow and then rubbing over. Now these vellums that I've got here, they actually have little silver roses on them. So when you rub over with your Distress Stain, the silver roses actually stay silver and it gives it that really nice um, effect. Okay, And the other colour that I'm going to use is Bundled Sage. So again, rubbing it over. Now the paper will curl up, as you can see that purple one there is deciding to go for a bit of a wander. And that's perfectly normal, they do that. Now you can leave them to dry naturally, and they'll take a little bit of time, or you can speed it up with a heat gun. I'm just going to do mine with a heat gun, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I've finished drying my pieces of vellum. Now, what I find easiest when you're drying any cardstock, not just vellum, is to heat both sides. So do some on this side, turn it over and do some on the other side. That way you're going to get it so that it doesn't curl all up and get too many bends in it. With vellum you're going to get a slight curve because it's that sort of um, paper. Okay, and then what we're going to do, we're going to punch out two of each of our jumbo daisies. So this is our jumbo daisy. Oh, sorry, not jumbo, super daisies. Okay. Now I like to remove the cover, I find it easier to, to do things with. So now the trick is with the vellum is to getting your flower punches on because you've coloured it a bit and then just punching. So we're going to do two of the bundled sage and we're going to do two of the dusty concord. And I find it nice to try and get some of the, so you can see the little silver rose on the side there, um, some of those on the outside petals. Okay, so now I've punched my flowers. I've got two of the uh, Dusty Concord and two of the Bundled Sage. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay them, the one I want on top first, and I'm going to stack them all directly underneath one another, just alternating the colours. Because what we're going to do first, we're going to punch the flower, punch the hole in the flower first. So we're going to take our crocodile and using our 3 16 hole, going to punch in the centre. Now try and get as in as close to the centre as you can. If you want you could mark it with a pencil and you could look through the little hole in the top so you can see your pencil. But I'm just going to eyeball it for now. Okay, punch. And you will get little pieces of vellum go everywhere because they're really light. And then you've got your hole in the centre. Now if you have any queries about how exactly to use your crocodile, check out my overview video. That's got all of the, the basic tips that you need to know on how to use your crocodile. Okay, so then what we're going to do, I've just got a little silver um, eyelet in our standard ones. And I'm going to pop that through. Now is the time to fan your petals out. If you don't do it until after, you actually won't be able to fan them out because your crocodile, when it sets your eyelet, clamps it on the back. So you won't be able to move your petals and if you try to, you'll tear it. I know because I tried. I thought it would be easier to do it all together. Okay, and so then with our crocodile, we need um, A on the top and we need one on the base. Okay, and we put that in. Now the tricky bit is holding your flower and getting it, getting your eyelet in. So I'm just getting my eyelet in there and you can see I can just squeeze. Don't squeeze too much because you don't want it to come back and cut, cut through your flower. But there we go. There's our flower, oops, there's our flower all done and nice and we set on the back. Okay, and then of course if you want to add a bit more dimension, you can fluff up with the bone scorer. 
that's entirely up to you what you want to do with your flower you can shape it however you wish okay so that's our, our first flower the next one I'm going to do is this one here so this is our scrunch flower so what I'm going to do this is just our regular white cardstock I've just cut a small piece and what I'm going to use I'm going to use spice marmalade and shabby shutters so these ones go really nicely together especially when they're blended with the distress stain so again to get it working just tap tap and just run it over the paper I'm just gonna do our blend, uh, shabby shutters same thing and just cross them over a little bit to get a bit of a, a mix happening in the middle and don't worry about them mixing colors and that sort of thing because they're actually designed that they're like a one-way valve they're not going to mix in together so if you do happen to get any of the um, spice marmalade in your shabby shutters for example I'll show you what you do to, to clean that this will be a little bit orange so I'm just gonna squeeze it and just work it out and the same with the spice marmalade just to make sure there's nothing left in there and then they're all fine to go all right so again it's going to curl up we can set it to dry as it is or we can use a heat gun I'm going to use a heat gun and I'll be right back okay so I'm back now what we're going to do this time we're going to use our flower punch and this is the super one again and again I like to pull these the cover off it just makes it easier for, to handle okay and then we're going to punch in it on each petal I tried to get some of each of the colors so you can have a, bit of a, a blended mottled look so just sort of pick and choose wherever you think okay sometimes it gets a bit stuck and just sort of have to shake it out a bit okay all right so I'm just going to use three for this one you can use more and have more a more layered flower if you want but that's up to you okay so then what I'm going to do I'm just going to grab another sheet of paper here I'm going to lay these down right side up I'm going to get uh, this is a new mister bottle. I'm just going to spritz it a few times. Don't make it too wet, but just just a little bit. Okay, so that's just going to soften them. And that's going to help those colours blend into one another as well. And then while they're still a little bit damp, I'm going to take my tweezers, place it in the middle of the flower, and fold it over, and then wrap it around. And I'll do that again, hopefully a bit closer to the camera this time. Fold it over. Hang on, fold it over and then wrap it around and so you're just sort of squishing the the petals together really okay so fold it over and wrap it round and once you've done a few you get the hang of it and you can start doing them pretty quick so we're going to do that to all three flowers and then if they're still a bit wet you can dry them again with a heat gun or you can just let them dry and they'll go quite firm because you've actually broken the fiber the fibers in the paper and so that'll help them keep their shape okay so here's my three flowers all dried and ready to go so now the trick is to layer them now it will be a bit fiddly to layer them because they're all sort of lumpy and bumpy but just sort of you know approximately and I like to make sure that there's a bit of green and a bit of orange here and there and just sort of layer them as best you can okay lay them up like so I want that and now we're going to grab our cropper dial again and we're going to punch our hole in the center and again using the 3 16 now this is going to be a little bit fiddly to get in because it's a little bit thicker and bulkier with all of the the raised up flowers so just find the best place to get in there and punch your flower into the middle punch your hole into the middle sorry okay and punch all right now again I'm going to get one of our eyelets this is one from one of our warm metal ones I'm just going to pop that in there it's a little bit fiddly to get it in because I haven't got them lined up wiggle them around okay there we go it's in okay and again we're going to use our A on the top and our 1 on the base and again get that in there making sure that it sticks in and squeeze and remember again don't go all the way down because you don't want to make that those eyelets come back up through they shouldn't come back up through with so many layers of paper but you still wouldn't want to cut your paper and then you can then play with your petals and get them how you want them 
like so. And so there's your flower. Okay. Now this one here, I won't show you this one, but this is the same technique, but just using a single colour for each piece and an eyelet set in the middle. So these can be used on card projects, scrapbooking layouts and anything. So it's a nice way to have something different in the centre of your flowers rather than a button or a, a brad, but have a nice little um, eyelet instead.